Good morning and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. Today I'm going to share with you guys a full day of homeschooling. But first I am making beds, always making beds. So we are currently homeschooling a 17 year old, a 13 year old, a nine year old, and eight year old. So if that's your thing, stick around. I am going to be showing you what we're using, how the day flows, and just everything that goes along with that. I think we're all very well aware that to have a good day of learning, we really need to have a good night's sleep. And that's where Sutera Pillows come into play. And today's video is sponsored by Sutera Pillows. So let me just give you a look at their pillows up close. Sutera Pillows have a very unique shape. First, they are made of memory foam. And they just have a really unique shape, a place cut out for your neck, a place to put your arms if you are a back sleeper and like to put your arms around. Uh, there's just so many unique unique ways that you can use and position the Sutera pillow to get the best night's rest possible. Sutera Dream Deep pillows are made from premium memory foam. It is a high density breathable material. It allows for continuous airflow to cool and wick away moisture. It also has a very unique butterfly contour design which supports the neck and the spine throughout the night. So whether you are a back, stomach, or a side sleeper, Dream Deep pillows give you the proper support for a good night's rest. The Sutera Dream Deep pillow does have a 30 day guarantee. Um, however, you know what? It has 2,192 five star reviews. So I'm pretty sure that you're gonna be happy with this. I know that um, we actually have two of these. Joe is using one and Warren is also using one. Excellent, especially for uh, neck support. And if you are trying to sleep on your back, it works wonderfully to contour your neck in the position to just make it the most comfortable for sleeping on your back uh, for, you know, for good, for good back care as well. So please check out the link in the description box below where you will see that any order over $50 does receive free shipping. And the Sutera Dream Deep Pillow comes with a zippered removable cover for easy washing. What I'm going to do here is actually answer questions throughout the day. So I remembered um, a few minutes ago that last spring sometime I had put a call out for homeschool questions because I thought I would do like a Q&A wrap up of the school year. And I just never got to that. So anyway, I thought this would be a perfect day as we're gonna go about our day homeschooling. I'll answer questions that you guys had put out to me last last spring. I'll just answer those as the day goes on. There are a couple different questions in here regarding what are we using for curriculum. So I just thought I would point out here, so this year both Peter and Maria are using Time for Learning. It's an online program and they are only using it for math and language arts. And so they, on here, they do lots of things like compound sentences. There's a spelling component to the language arts. There's like reading comprehension, those types of things. But then from there with language arts, we also do other things like do a lot of reading, coordinating conjunction. Time for learning is pretty nice because you can put in, uh, you can schedule breaks, you can schedule each week out for your child. However, I like it. It's working well so far this year. It has a little bit of like a, like games. It's got like a little game component to it that makes it, I think, a little bit fun for the kids. Okay, so this is oftentimes where we do, at least when I have this table clear, which is right now, <laughs> uh, this is oftentimes where we do kind of like our seat work when I'm working with Joseph and Peter and Maria together. And so I have a couple little systems over here where I just keep stuff, all the things that you need for homeschooling. And Maria is just wondering what she has to do. So that brings me over here to these like calendar. Just a minute, Joe, I'll help you in a second. Joe is actually working on writing some words right now. So I think that's what he needs help with. Uh, anyway, so there was another question asking about like how I plan out what we're gonna be doing for the year and goals. So what I did for the month, I just wrote all of our school days and then I, it's just like making out a meal plan. I look at which days are busier than others based on other things we have going and different activities and co-op and things like that. So let's just look at, for example, like this day here. So T for L just stands for time for learning. So that means that Maria needs to do that on that day. She also does art 
and then we and we do that all together and then also the sound unit and so we will do that all together and that particular day we will be doing lesson five of our sound unit uh, you can see for example here's like another day she does time for learning it's also a day that we go to the library and then she does all together we work on our Declaration of Independence lap book. So for the sound unit and for science we are using Moving Beyond the Page and that is just a nice program. It's somewhat literature based. For example if you look over on the back here we are currently doing, yes we are doing this unit, sound unit, and if you wanted to do a language art unit that goes along with it you could do the language art Who is Helen Keller and then they coordinate which is really kind of a neat thing how this all works. I don't use all of the units so we're not currently doing that particular Helen Keller unit but we are doing the science units yeah we just do this all together I have kind of like this teacher book here and then the kids all have over in those wall pockets Joseph Peter Maria all have a folder that they have their science uh, worksheets in so that they can pull it out put it on the table and we all work together on that I'll give you a peek at Declaration of Independence. So this is actually from In the Hands of a Child. I think that's what it's called, if I could find the cover. Yes, In the Hands of a Child. This is a multi-level one, number 1015. You can just hop onto their website. They have well over probably 100, whew, God bless you, 100 or 200 different lap book type of projects. And if you're unfamiliar what a lap book it is, it's basically where you take one or two binder, or not binders, but um, file folders, and you glue them together and you make like a little book. And so then the kids cut things out, like we were doing the parts of the Declaration of Independence. They have some like reasons for the American Revolution. There's a little thing about the Boston Tea Party that they wrote up. And then this is a timeline that they put together. And so it's just kind of everything gets put together in this one little booklet and then it's easy for review. Okay, so we did a whole lot of seat work and everything this morning. <laughs> it's already noon, time for lunch. And then we have an activity that we have to get to for the afternoon. But I thought, let's stop in and answer another question. How do you confidently launch your kids without letting the fear creep in? Boy, that is a pretty deep question. I have to say that for me at this point now, the fear doesn't really creep in with launching them because we've you know basically done it three times in the sense i mean our our third one she isn't out of college but she has you know made that jump she's made you know those life decisions what direction does she want to go she's living on her own things like that i think it just kind of comes a little bit from experience i know that with our first it was much scarier and i mean i don't want to say scary but it was just more overwhelming and you wondered, you know, did I prepare them enough? Did we do enough? It's always that that creeps in. Did we do enough? I mean, as long as what you do is based out of love for your children and for their future, then you've probably done enough. You've probably put your heart into it. You've put like everything this morning. <laughs> It was a rough morning. There were tears on the kids' part, on my part, just, you know, just everything. You've got young kids and they're dealing with common, least common multiples and greatest common multiples and things like that. And you've got teens who are dealing with just the issues of teens and trying to make that, trying to bridge from being, um, uh, you know, completely dependent on their parents to having more independence and things like that. And it just can be, it can be a trying time for all the way around. And if you're homeschooling, yeah, it can be a trying time. Anyway, that's not, doesn't have anything to do with the question, but I think just as long as you know that you have put into it everything that you could and you go, you know what, I don't have any regrets. Well, good morning. <laughs> I thought that yesterday, I was going to get to all the questions and everything and it just didn't happen. It was actually a really, really tough day. There were just a whole lot of tears. That's it. There were tears. I just tell you that whether you've been doing this for two weeks or you have been homeschooling for, I believe this might be our 19th year, uh, It, even though it's easier and I have seen the end result of it, and I understand that there's going to be these kinds of days. There still are those kinds of days. <laughs> we still have not found the perfect solution to eliminate them altogether. Four of on 
it with. What is this one? In. In. Very good. And what was this one? With. Okay, good. Did you say the TH? With? With? Very good. I want you to work on writing those words down here, okay? Okay. Like I said, today's a new day, and I want to get to answering the questions and just show you a little bit more with our homeschooling. So just for like reference, it's 8.40 right now. We all, well, at least I was. I'm not sure if everyone was like rushing around all morning, but I was rushing around most of the morning trying to get all the things done that I like to get done in the morning so that I can put more of my focus on the homeschooling. It doesn't happen like that every day, but I do find, and this is not one of the questions that anybody asked, but I do find if I get things like my bed made, laundry started, and any other little cleaning thing that I want to do, maybe it's doing a mom vacuuming, you know, my kids vacuum, but every once in a while it just needs a mom vacuuming, if you know what I mean. And I know you know what I mean. <laughs> so uh, I just rushed around getting those types of things happening this morning. So then I feel like I'm a little bit more in tune and focused on homeschooling. And I don't let those other things creep in. So I was just sitting down to correct Sam's work. I usually do it in the evening. So what he does with his workbook style schoolwork is he, and he's an 11th grader, he puts it open um, on the corner of our island. And that lets me know that he's finished it and then I need to correct it and I've torn out all of the correcting or the answer keys from the back and I have them out here in my little file thing right there there was a question here someone had asked what do I use for high school I wish I could just give you like a sentence I use blank but I don't and I change it up for every one of our kids it really a lot of it is determined by that child's learning style that child's attitude <laughs> that child's ability to work on their own or if they need, you know, more, let's say, encouragement or me, just more teacher kind of teacher involvement. And so I, I change it up all the time. Even our family dynamics. So right now I have four at home. There were there was a time when I had seven at home and things the things that we used, the dynamics of the kids, the ages of them. You know, I had them working together on certain things. Like currently, there really isn't a lot that Sam could work on with Joseph or Peter or Maria just because of the age difference. You know, there was a time when I had you know, the older kids were closer together even in their high school years, so I would have them team up on geography or I'd have them team up on chemistry, things like that, and that did work really well. Uh, one child might have done chemistry a little too early, per se, and one child might have done it at, like, the right time. I put all those things in air quotes because is there really a right or a wrong time to learn chemistry? I really don't think so. Currently, I'm just, I'm using a workbook style math. No, it's not online or anything like that. There are actually online lessons that you can watch. I don't think he watches any of them. If he has troubles, he just comes to me. It's just working out well for him and I. And I have the same kind of calendar for him that I showed you that I have for Joseph, Peter, and Maria. I just map it all out and I say, okay, I divide the total lessons by how many months that, or how many weeks that we want to homeschool. And then we just divide that out, how many lessons he needs to do each day to meet that goal for that particular week. I hope that makes sense to you. For high school, I've used so many different things. Institute for Excellence in Writing, which is IEW. I really like that program, and it worked really, really well with a number of my kids. I'm currently, currently I don't have anybody using that program. That's okay, we'll probably get back into that at some point. I've used teaching textbooks, again, for a number of my kids. Currently, we're not using any teaching te textbooks. Wordly Wise, I really like easy grammar, especially in the older levels where it just kind of keeps those uh, grammar topics fresh in their mind. It's a short lesson every single day. Actually, I'll be working, uh, Sam will be working on that next semester. I'm going to answer one more question here since Peter and Maria are actually listening to um, like an audiobook right now. Yes, it's going to be about you, Joe. And so someone had asked, how did you gain confidence teaching a special yes, needs student? How do you go about setting goals for what they should learn over the year? I'm fortunate that Joe is our fifth child, so I already had homeschooling experience kind of under my belt. 
And I also, before Joe, I also had two children um, with dyslexia. I already understood the need to change things up and to not think that every child was gonna learn the same way. Also, by the time Joseph had come along, I really had a strong belief that if you love your child <laughs> to the end of time, to the moon and back, you want them to succeed. And so you will put the effort into it and you'll find what works for that child. And so I guess that was what gave me the confidence. Not that I thought I knew all of the ways to teach a child um, who has low tone to hold a pencil or anything. I didn't know any of that. But I did know that I loved him enough, loved him so much, <laughs> loved him way more than I could ever imagine, and that I would do whatever it took. And then as far as setting goals, it really just came down to, I would just look at what we had accomplished in one year and you know, like the past year, and I would say, okay, so what next do I want him to accomplish? So I usually will have educational goals, social goals, and then with that, I look at the goals that I have and I just break it down into steps. And I say, okay, if we want to homeschool for 30 weeks or 36 weeks or whatever it might be, what do we need to accomplish each week? Or, you know, what do I, what, what goals do we have for each week? So that's really how I do it. And that's how I do it for all the kids, no matter their ability. Well, it's another day here <laughs> in our homeschool and I'm still working through getting these questions answered for you. So the next one here, somebody asks, can you homeschool when you aren't very well educated yourself and don't feel equipped in certain subjects? So I would say um, absolutely yes. And the reason behind that is because for one, all of the grade school subjects and things, most of the curriculum is very self-explanatory. It has readings and things to go with it. And so the cool thing is that oftentimes, I know for me, I'm learning right along with my kids. Topics and things like that that were probably not very interesting to me as a child or as a teen or even in college. <laughs> and so I am learning right along with them. Now, when you get into the upper grades, there are definitely topics and coursework that a person would just not know. You may not have a full knowledge of the scope and sequence of physics or a full knowledge of the scope and sequence of calculus or something like that. And that's okay. There are so many options available out there. There are online courses. There are um, tutors available. I mean, there's so many ways to go about finding the information that you need. If you live in an area where there might be a technical college or a university a system, there are, again, there's in-person options. There are um, online options. And I know a number of the schools that are in our area, they will allow students um, as young as 16 to take coursework at their school. And I would imagine if it is an online class, and I bet if you had prior approval, they would let a younger student take a course as well. So there are so many ways to become educated. Um, it's not, you know, I just, I don't think that the parent has to know everything. Obviously, we don't know everything. This um, mom is asking about beginner's advice for a four-year-old. She's constantly asking about letters, numbers, addition, and she has a hard time. She says, I have a hard time keeping up. I say, just go with it. If you have a child who is on the young side and they are super excited about learning, give them every opportunity you can. Answer all their questions. Um, if you're absolutely brain drained <laughs> from all the questions, pop in some good videos that go through that. I know that um, leapfrog videos have always been a favorite of mine. They have a lot of different topics in math and adding and reading and things like that. And so pop those in. If they're super interested in science topics, you can always pop in the videos from Mrs. Frizzle. Um, uh, Magic school bus videos, you can pop those in. And so, you know, just really go go for it. Give her lots of opportunities to write her numbers and letters and things like that. Help her write words and maybe letters to her family, things like that. Just really, I say, just really encourage her. There is nothing wrong with just saying, you know what, I just need a little bit of a break and you need to uh, spend some time outside enjoying the natural world because I find that there's so much interesting things in the natural world that can really keep some of those very inquisitive and um, 
uh, excited to learn kids. It can really keep them going just by getting outside and enjoying some natural world. I got this question, when and how do I transition from a laid back homeschooling approach to a more rigorous schoolwork? I say just read your child. Every child is different. Some are really into what we would call traditional schoolwork learning and they're just into that early four or five years old. Some are not interested in that type of thing until maybe even nine or ten, dare I say. Um, and I don't think either one, there is nothing wrong with either one. As long as there's still opportunities to learn in your household and in your family, you know, just try to go with the flow if you can. Obviously, as a parent, we start to get a little bit panicked if we see a child that doesn't really have an interest in learning to read and write and things like that. So again, there is nothing wrong with kind of pushing it a little bit for them, giving them opportunities to write letters to a friend or, and then just try to squeeze in things that could feel like a little bit more traditional schooling. Good morning, Peter. Did you get all your work done over there? Almost. Almost. We'll go sit down and finish. Someone else is wondering if I quiz or test. Um, yes. I do. So especially in the older grades, they have quizzes and tests built into the different curriculums, uh, like teaching textbooks. They have, um, they have quizzes and tests. Right now, Peter and Maria are using Time for Learning. There are quizzes and tests built into that. So I, I do use them. I wouldn't say that I use them as the sole uh, determination of a grade or how well they're doing, but it is just another tool to help me out. So I do have about four more questions here. So the next one is what curriculum for what kids? That is a huge question with a very, very, very long answer. I utilize so many different things and there are a lot of prepackaged curriculums out there that include absolutely everything and you can order right from those companies, say second grade, and you can order across the board and they'll give you everything from science and social studies and spelling and math and grammar and just all of it. But I have never found that to work well for us because one, my kids are never just exactly second grade in absolutely everything. They're usually below, at, and above in all different subjects in the grade that they're at. And so I just try to pull and work at whatever the level is that they are at. I also like to find curriculums that have a wide age range. So like for example, right now we're using Moving Beyond the Page in the background and uh, that has, it has age brackets that it's appropriate for. And I like that because I can use it with um, multiple kids doing the same uh, topics in the same curriculum. Ninth grade algebra and biology. So for biology, I've used a number of different things for biology. A couple of my kids did um, science shepherd. Is that what it's called? Shepherd? Shepherd oh. biology. That was a very, very rigorous biology program. <laughs> and we've also done uh, online biology. I've used time for learning biology. We have done um, like a K-12 biology class. So they all have done something different based on what I thought was going to be best for that child and best for our family situation at the time. Same for algebra. Algebra we have used, basically for algebra I've used only two different things. Saxon math and teaching textbooks for algebra. I hope this was helpful in some way. I filmed this over the course of three different homeschooling days and so on. So I feel like I'm just a little bit um, jumping all over the place, but I will link a couple other homeschooling videos. One that is specific to homeschooling with Joseph. He is our son with Down syndrome. I'll also put another video up where I'm just homeschooling like a day in the life where I had teens and younger kids at the same time. If you haven't yet subscribed and you want to see all of the things I have coming in the future for homeschooling and food and cranberry harvest and all those things, you can subscribe right now and never miss another video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.